Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I sit on the Board of Trustees of the International Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by Dr. Langer, who is esteemed and going to introduce himself to you so you can know who we're talking about. And we're going to talk about some important issues related to menopausal hormone therapy. Dr. Langer. Uh, yes, I'm a family physician uh, of more than 40 years and a preventive medicine specialist. Uh, uh, I'm uh, what's known as an epidemiologist. Uh, that may be a little bit more familiar to people uh, in uh, this age of the pandemic. I study trends in diseases in groups of people. And my career has focused not just on clinically taking care of individuals, but also on prevention of age-related diseases, especially in older women. I've been an investigator for many of the major studies looking at that, including the Women's Health Initiative. So the Women's Health Initiative is now 20 years old. Hard to believe, but here we are 20 years later, and women still are confused and concerned about the messaging that they got from this study, that here it is 20 years later and the confusion still persists. So for women who, who know something about this, but not a lot, tell them about what the study was meant to do. So the intention of the WHI hormone studies was to look at a treatment that Almost everything that we knew up until that time suggested was a very effective preventive intervention uh, to protect against heart disease as well as against fractures, maybe even to protect against dementias and mental deterioration as women got older. And with that in mind, since almost all of the information that was available at that point was from women who had started taking hormones around the time of menopause and then continued to take it and followed in an observational way. In other words, not in a, what we call a clinical trial, an experimental test where we can isolate the effects clearly of something that we give to people uh, from other things that may also be related like other healthy lifestyle and so on. The idea was that this stuff looked so great starting in younger menopausal women, maybe it would be even better in older menopausal women because lots of studies, especially of prevention of heart disease had suggested that the greater the burden of risk factors the better the effect of a preventive inter intervention. So WHI specifically set out to test whether menopausal hormone therapy would convey benefits, especially prevention of heart disease, if women started it a decade or more after menopause. So we had those headline news that looked at all the women at the same time and the results we're not really given in terms of what happened if you were younger or what happened if you were older, but the messaging that women got was hormones are no good. Hormones are going to give you breast cancer. Hormones are going to give you a heart attack. Hormones are going to give you a stroke. So briefly for some of the key messages that women need to know about menopausal hormones, the one size doesn't fit all and the one age doesn't fit all seems to be an important message for women to hear. Absolutely. So the WHI, in order to test whether or not this worked for women who were way past menopause, deliberately only enrolled a very, very small number of women who were at the ages that usually would get hormones prescribed for them when they were around the time of menopause. So only about 10%, about one in 10 of the women uh, in the WHI hormone trials were aged 50 to 54, the age at which time most women might start on hormones. 70% of them were over the age of 60, all the way up to age 79. The way that the study was reported was with all of those women across the age ranges all combined together. And what it showed was that what, what we hoped would happen, that it would be good for older women, just wasn't true. Uh, there was no benefit for preventing heart disease, the leading killer of women worldwide, uh, for starting 
after the age of 60. But what was not clearly described in either the first paper or really in subsequent papers is that it still had the same benefits for women starting around the time of menopause that had been seen in all of the studies that came before and the studies that have come since. It did not upset the apple cart for everything that we knew about this, but in fact, it showed that what we hoped might happen just wasn't so. On top of that, the way that the study results were released in 2002 was disastrous. Um, mm -hmm. It trumpeted what was said to be an increase in breast cancer, which in fact was not statistically significant. In other words, the way that we're supposed to look at data like this in a clinical trial is that it has, has to pass a test that says, this is beyond the shadow of a doubt, something that we think is there. It didn't pass that test. Breast cancer was not statistically significant. And in subsequent looks at the data, even with a whole lot better information available to look at, it still did not show a statistically significant harm for breast cancer. But yet, since that's women's worst fear, when the results first came out with a very powerful press release saying that breast cancer was the reason the study was stopped, it set that impression in women's minds. And that unfortunately hasn't been changed in 20 years even though for younger women, the risk is, is just not meaningful and the benefits that they can get for a woman who has a reason to start on hormones are tremendous. And I think before I let you go, I want to really reiterate that for our younger women, meaning women within the first 10 years of menopause, that if there's a reason to go on to menopause for hormone therapy, not to be fearful by headline news that does not apply to them. Exactly. So uh, first and foremost, any woman's major or any average woman's major risk is of a heart attack. That's what's most likely to kill her and even to cause what we call morbidity, uh, re reduced uh, good function um, uh, in her lifetime. And hormone therapy started within the first 10 years of menopause clearly seems to provide that benefit. And on top of it, it also provides clear benefits for another major hazard, and that's osteoporosis leading to mm -hmm. fractures. So for both of those reasons, a woman who has menopausal symptoms, reasons to consider maybe getting some benefit from menopausal hormone therapy, really should have a frank discussion with her doctor, ideally a woman's health specialist who understands menopause. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure, thank you.